Well, folks, the day has finally arrived. The day has arrived that the massive editing PC will begin to be born. There it is, folks. There it is, the system. We're gonna put it all in an Antec 302 case. It will be powered, it will be powered by an EVGA 1600 watt, 1 1.6 kilowatt power supply. My motherboard has been chosen. It is the MSI Creator TRX40. The CPU, the Ryzen Threadripper. The Threadripper of death. Sporting 24 cores and 48 threads. That will be kept cool by that Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro TR4. My video has been chosen with the GeForce 1070 Ti. For initial storage, I have chosen the Samsung 970 Evo Plus uh, NVMe drives times two. We're initially gonna start out with 64 gigs of Vengeance LPX through uh, DD or yeah DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM. This motherboard can go up to 256 gigs of RAM. There is a CPU in the Ryzen Threadripper 3 third gen series. It is the 3990. Yes, I believe 3990X that sports 64 cores and 128 threads. The processor right now is, you can buy it, you sell your firstborn child. It's, I think the processor's around four grand or something insane. It's, it's a ridiculous amount of money. Anyhow, this is the system. Tonight, I assemble. We do the smoke test. Stay tuned for further developments. Fade to black. All right, I'm gonna take some footage here. This, this absolutely sick piece of hardware, not as overpacked as some as I've seen, this is the thread ripper. Set him aside here for just a moment. Let me check. Ugh. Get 100% of the shot. Add some additional lighting here. This motherboard and all of its accessories, this thing's got to weigh 15 pounds. Full disclosure, I've opened this up earlier to slobber over it. Box here. Box of accessories.
thing is so freaking heavy. 15 pounds of motherboard. Uh, let me see here. I want... I want... What am I going to do here? I'm gonna make myself something because this board is going to scratch the hell out of this table. I'm interested in making everything else and saving the pieces. So what we'll do is gently take the motherboard out of the package. on the fan right there. The first order of business <clears throat> clear workspace. Thread ripper even comes with its own special torque screwdriver. Trade your dad comes up, holder slides out. Let's see. Oh my god. Huh. That looks fragile. So I come here to the holder. Slide the CPU out of the packaging. It is held in this orange tray, which is conveniently sized. Oh crap. Um, okay. Okay, that's a spring-loaded... Well, that's supposed to go... Thought this thing was supposed to be more of a precision fit than that. This goofy carrier thing. It I had the impression it's supposed to just slide into this holder. thing doesn't look like <clears throat> I mean that's why 
rip that off, but it looks like that's how that goes on there. Hold down until processor clicks into place. One Titan in one, two, three order. Okay, no, I see here what's going on. This bastard is not. Not seated properly at all, and I'm glad I caught it. I guess some engineer thought that would be, there we go. There's a little rail here on this side and a little rail on this side. When this thing locks in, boom, that is a secure fit and that is seated correctly. So then we go here. So I'm gonna do is, going here and I am torquing them in order. We're torquing evenly. Okay, so now this is the final set. Wrench was supposed to click like that. All right, CPU is nested. <clears throat> that part of the deal is done. Now um, there is another thing here. I don't know what the heck. Okay, this deal looks like it goes on here. However, I don't think I need to use this piece because, because we have this monster, massive, be quiet fan. I gotta figure out just how exactly that thing's supposed to attach to this heat, to the heat sink. And it sure as heck uh, let's see here this monster heat pipe I mean this thing is just freaking massive it's got a second fan let me just look at this freaking thing compared to my hand. Well, that's metallic too. That's not just some cheap ass plastic fan. So as part of the parts kit for this Be Quiet fan, got four little wire bales, and we've got. <clears throat> screws and standoffs, a power splitter, which actually I don't think I am going to need. Um, I have got, I have got CPU fan one and pump fan. And I've got a system fan and external fan three don't have any other fan connectors. Um, actually, take that back. I got on this side of the motherboard, Rainbow, it's product for RGB crap, X Fan 1, e e EXS Fan 2, Sys Fan 2, Sys Fan 3, some, some different head jumper headers here, System Fan 4. <laughs> 
Sure, board sure isn't hurting for fanage. So they give me a tube of schmoo. Now I don't know if this is the Arctic Silver schmoo or what that is. It's got a cool bitchin' thread ripper sticker here to go on this thing like it's doing. So it looks like it looks like that goes on the top, perhaps. So this thing's got, it's taking me four bales. I'm gonna say that I could actually, and I think it's possible to have three fans on this thing. And I also think that this fan, this thing, yeah, I could definitely do all three fans. That might not be a bad idea. I probably have to find another one of these be quiet optional fans. I think probably think two is good enough. And that thing, and that thing probably bolted down. That just barely clears the back plane. Rotate this around so we can have a have a looky loo. That thing sitting on this down there just barely clears that. So here, it's interesting. I'm trying to figure out exactly how they want me to attach. You know, when all else fails, you might be able to read the instructions. Oh, haha, <laughs> what instructions? I don't know instructions with this silly freaking fan. Uh, it's not that I think I saw. Double check the box. Nope. <laughs> instructions for the fan? Oh, wait a minute. I'm stupid. I did see instructions for the fan. We'll look at the English instructions. Screws, spacers, long TR4 mounting, short TR4, cooler mounting bridge. Interesting. Oh, okay, okay, now this becomes painfully, painfully obvious how this works. Once you look at the destructions. So essentially, set Mr. Fan aside here because I got to add a second fan to him. So we got the long deal that goes there, the short deal that goes there. It's an interesting thing is part of this fan kit, the folks at Be Quiet have included an awesome personalized screwdriver. So that allows me so we've got four of these standoffs and each one of those go on there. Like so and then this little doodad goes on there. And let's see, the screws by all accounts appear to be identical. Get that in the short we'll confirm that those things actually go. Where's my stretch? Yeah, that's the only way they can go is up there. Six instructions. You know, it's a lot of time. <clears throat> what I'm doing here is well, finger tight stuff, not just torque down one side. Kind of balance the torque.
And notice I'm not using a fist on this. I'm tightening these things down, fingertip torque only on the screwdriver to avoid stripping the threads because that would really suck. And so what this little thing does, when I mount the cooler, this little bridge appears goes across the top. It even has little rails that it fits in. Oh, it drops right in place. And that sits directly on there. And then you unscrew these two little hole plugs, which allows the supplied screwdriver to go straight down through and put those on. Now, um, before we get excited about that, everything in its the time and place, if we open up this incredibly well-packed motherboard, incredibly well-packed. This is a thing that comes with it. It's a, um, oh, it's not a riser. It's actually, a, they call it expansion module. And uh, this is kind of a neat deal that I might eventually use. I'm gonna be in the box for the time being, but what this little gem does, you can put four more NVMe drives on this deal and make it, and literally have your own RAID array and plug it in. It takes up basically two slots how many of these things you could plug in, especially if I end up with two GPUs on this board. I mean, you know, if you're running at five gigahertz with 256 gigs of RAM and and 50, terab or 50 terabytes of storage space, I mean, why, why not have a RAID and eight monitors and all that stuff? Um, let's open this thing up here. Let's see. Quick installation guide, says anything useful, blah, 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 pictorial, memory. Now the thing I am most, see I read, uh, I downloaded a copy of this manual, which by the way, this retail value is board around 700 bucks. That's what I think they're selling for. I got this on eBay for a hell of a lot less than that, and that's why I splurged and went in and got the processor, figuring I could, this will, if this doesn't, this. 24 core friggin' 48 thread proc doesn't hold me for four years. I don't know what to say. And maybe by the time you know I get ready, I think this is slow. The next processor that I'll get will just be a plug in place. I pull the system apart, slide this proc out, put it back in the holder, sell it, whatever, and upgrade to the net to the 64 core processor. But um Let's see here. Uh, there is a thing here on installing memory. Let's see, installing memory. If I'm running two two DIMMs, I need to put them into uh, D2 and B2. Right. Okay. Got my little road map here. Got all this stuff in the way. Let's go over here and I'm gonna need to go ahead and get the crack open this vengeance memory kit. You might wonder why did I go this route? I mean, did I research this board? Yeah, I did. It didn't have very many reviews on Amazon because it's the most expensive board in this class. It's a third gen Ryzen or Threadripper board. Um, L uh, LPR, YouTube channel LPR. Uh, he built, he, he maxed his board out. Stupid, it's expensive, all new stuff. Um, I can't afford to do that, but if I sell a bunch of stuff, it'll lower the cost on this upgrade. Uh, let's see here. So, um, D2 and B2. Well, that makes it real easy. They're the D2 and B2. I mean, they're not labeled worth the crap on the board. 
nice if they actually had something on board, but it doesn't matter because you can tell in the, in the manual that right here D2 and B2 are the outside outside memory sticks. And it looks like when I add, get, if I get ready to add the next 64 gigs of RAM, I just go to the second one because you get the, the one A1 or C1, whatever, they're on the inside. So it makes it really easy to just figure that one out. All right, so let's go ahead and put some memory on this cow. Interestingly enough, only one side. Oh, nice crisp click. One side. Nice solid crunch. Oh. So And that's when I'm stupid. Now, this was just a test fitting, by the way. I knew something was wrong. Outside. 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 Even, even sitting here narrating this video, nothing bad would have happened. It just probably wouldn't have posted or wouldn't have recognized all the memory. So the next thing I need to do is probably put a little bit of alcohol, and make sure this pro top of this processor is perfectly clean. And I need to go, I've got a tube of Arctic Silver. I mean, this crap might be Arctic Silver, but then again, it might not be. I mean, it's probably good enough for the Be Quiet people. Um, but I've got Arctic Silver, so I got, for this, I'll use the Arctic Silver stuff. And do, for, I don't know, some people do little dots and stuff. I don't know. Um, and actually, actually, you know what? I am not... I am not going to install um, I am not going to install the, the fan on this thing until it's actually mounted inside of the case because this fan is so freaking massive and I I'll, I'll want to lay the case down on its back set it in there and then these screws are kind of captured. They can't come out of the cross brace bracket. We'll set it on there and then I can plug CPU fan one and it'd be nice if there was a CPU fan two, but um, I, I want to avoid if I can utilizing the splitter because the splitter uh, CPU fan it's got four wires. I don't know why this thing's got four wires. Usually it fans a positive, negative, and a tachometer. So the, the system knows the, how, what speed the fan is spinning at. I don't know what to think about that. But I, I think I'm just going to... They'll both reach over to CPU fan and pump fan. And that'll be fine. I'll just land them individually because I've got the real estate for it. Uh, let's see. The next thing. Multiple graphics card... Looks like the single card goes on PCIe one. Um, the first, so we'll do that. Power connectors. Let's see. Where does it talk? Where does it talk about? I want to clear BIOS, CMOS, CPU, CPU fan, pump fan, system fan. I'll have, looks like I'll have on this case, I'll have two system fans. So we'll have system fan one, or maybe maybe they'll all just be external fan. Um, auto mode, PWM fan, pump fans, PWM, default auto mode fan. Maybe I can configure all of them to be pulse width modulation which is what I want, so that way if the system is just idling, all the fans will slow down. In fact, they might even stop if the system's just idle, if I walk away from it. Because I'm, I'm not gonna have it do any power saving crap at all. It's just gonna, it's gonna run. Um, let's see, where's the... Stalling M2 module. Let's see, M2 plate, 
thermal pad, thermal pad. I think this silly ass thing, um, remove the M2 heatsink before installing the motherboard into the case. Oh, because there's a mounting hole underneath here. And that's why that thing's loose. Nice. Let's use my, oh, look at that. It doesn't fit. And we're back. After procuring a screwdriver that actually will touch it and two proper silver schmoo. Mm -hmm. Clean up here a little bit, get this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> so, consulting this awesome thick manual, it appears to me that they got a nice little diagram here. So, we've got a pointy tip, looks like no blunt tip is toward the connectors on the back that's two one two two apparently apparently um this third guy over here there's something weird about him i don't know if he's quite as fast or something but i'm only doing two i'm gonna have one of these deals that'll be my boot drive and the other will probably be my one of my drives for doing uh, audio or rendering or some crap. So, um, we'll stab these in before I take a break. It's getting kind of dark, and I do want me to go take my pup for a walk. So, we pop out Mr. M2 drive here. I mean, this is just so sick. From the days I started building computers, thank you to my friend Alan Yoder, NG5Y. You know, learning how to do this and understanding what I'm doing, everything. So, <laughs> this is sick. One terabyte. I still remember 20 gig MF or no, 20 megabyte MFM drives and RLL drives. It's just the, the the way the progress we made is just stupid. All right, um, one standoff. It's, um, same as you remove the standoff. Um, hmm, interesting. I'm not sure exactly what that's all about. Um, okay, I've, there's something I need to figure that out. So the protecting films. So definitely one thing they want me to do is to remove the protective films. Static or magnet, I'm not sure. Okay, and I know that that is a protective film. I can get my little dick beaters on it. Tool, get up. There we go, pull him off. Okay, pull off blue film. Okay, so. Yeah, I think Mr. Standoff comes out, Mr. NVMe drive goes in, and the way this works is the heat sink, when I screw it down, it'll actually push this thing down and hold it. So I'm not sure, okay, where's the second? Get him installed.
I understand if I need to That seems right. I don't think I need that other screw in there. I don't think. Okay, I think they want me to actually put this put the screw in there. Okay, makes sense. Thought the thing just held down all by itself, but new. No. Just a little bit of freaking wizardry behind this apparently. Maybe not. Shows installing. I think I need to dig into the bag of stuff. The cables, and crapola, nothing there. Flash drive for Flash and BIOS. You know, I could have sworn that all of this razzmatazz. Okay, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Those little screws I pulled out of there might actually be, those might actually be the standoffs. Doesn't look like it. A screw, standoff, thermal pad, thermal pad, M2 plate. Okay, let's give let's give this a whirl. I'm going to this, the tip of this thing is actually threaded, or the head is threaded. And since I'm using my powerful sense of intuition, finger tight. I did just. I got the three screws here in the bag that I know absolutely would go on there and would hold that thing down. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. edge off here. I need one of these screws. On this side here, the plate holds that down. <clears throat> On this side, 
I got this standoff, but my concern is, my concern is that there's a gap. This standoff holds this thing down. Now let's just play with this for a second. Some engineer had to dream this crap up. There it is. So the, this steel here, there's no screw holes. This guy goes on like so. Does it actually put that on there? finger tight on the tip of the screwdriver and my M2 drives are installed. Boom. I would think that now is the time to cut and before it gets terribly dark, go take care of my wolf. And when I come back, we will install the motherboard in the case. And I'll make sure the heat sink is all cleaned up because I have to land a bunch of connections and stuff. I've got the power supply to go in the case. And um, we'll make it happen. Fade to black. All right, flash forward here a little bit into the future. Still the same night. Uh, now we've come to the point of this build where back up here and get a better shot. lid here. Just set Mr. Lid aside. All right, inside of the Antec three hundred and two. I think that's all about anti chaff paper, maybe. Both these fans, oh, this is cool, both these fans actually have switches on the back. USB 3.0 header. Let's uh, take a quick gander of what we got here in this case. The lighting here completely sucks. <clears throat> got air filter down in the bottom for the power supply to draw air through. Um, Got a big fan on the top, big fan on the back. We've got several vertical or horizontal drive bays accessible from the side. Interestingly enough, on this particular case, the way I'm going to have my, my computer positioned, the side of the computer is going to be up against the wall. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it is what it is. <clears throat> anyway, one of the interesting features here on this particular case Get a close-up shot. We've got some control switches here, so I can actually control the top and the back fans. Turn them high or wow! I could almost not read that under these ridiculously dim lights. So we've got low. Well, that's I guess low and high. I thought I thought there was an actual off position. Eh, whatever. It's all good. So this point 
at this point, looking here at standoffs, while wow, there's even a, a fan, I can do a, God, things just got a place for fans out the wall, zoo fan, I can do a fan on the side. It's got, I believe, positions even up here in the front. Um, I believe I could pop the front of this case off, release these tabs, and the, and the front comes off. And I believe I've got options for two fans even in the front to increase airflow. I think the clean air is going to be coming through the front, and we're going to be blowing hot air out the back. I believe that's how this thing is going to work. And here's a... Your removable air screen. It'll stop. It'll stop dust bunnies. It's not exactly a HEPA filter, but anyway. So now comes the fun part. One of the things they even have a sticker here to tell you. On this motherboard, you, there's a third M2 mounting position, and you need to remove this plate to un, to expose a mounting hole. So this thing, just kind of, kind of eyeball it in here. And this board is an EATX, so it takes up every bit of real estate. So one of the things I'm putting in here, and I'm looking for. Are the locations of the mounting screws so it looks like a good thing in this bag of wonderfulness we have bag of hardware and in bag of hardware I've got plenty of screws and standoffs and like some stuff to add additional long screws for fans if I wanted to so I can already tell that I've got at least one, two, three, four, four more standoffs that I need to install to make this thing right. I'm gonna set this in here temporarily. Uh, I'm also going to step out, see I don't think, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to step out to the garage and grab a nut driver for the four additional standoffs that I am about to install. Make sure they get torqued down appropriately. So we'll pause the video. All right, we're back. This time with the appropriate five millimeter nut driver. Go in here very gently, gently eyeball this thing. Some of these are going to be really, really obvious. Finger tight, finger tight. Okay, it's two down. So I got one there. Do one up here. Looks like I got two more here. Here that I'm actually using a 
actually put a nut driver on all these things and make sure they're absolutely snug. Okie doke. Mm -hmm. Ain't this the moment of truth? Strong hands. Wow. <laughs> All right. And I think One of the cool things about one of these multi-driver tools, you pull it out, you also have a nut driver for that. So I can use that nut driver. And one thing I can't stress enough when you're building something, especially a high dollar upper crustacean machine like this, take your time. Measure, well, measure three times, cut once. The last thing you want to do is cross thread something or have your screwdriver come off and go scraping across the board and knock a couple components off. <clears throat> Ask me how I know. I can't tell you how many systems I've assembled in my life. Starting I mean, building the ones for myself in the very, very first 286-12 machine. And here we are. I mean... <laughs> How many 286-12s stacked together could equivalent, even come close to the computing power of this one board and this one processor? I mean, how freaking many? I think about 1,600 pallets of 286s to come even close. Oh boy, all right. And the sad thing is I hate to think that what I'm building this machine to do probably someone could do on a Mac. For well, the Mac definitely wouldn't be cheaper than this, I don't think. I don't think it would be. Uncle Gates is really, really proud of his crap. Alright, so screw, 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 screw. Screw and screw. I see no open holes. Memory's in the right place. We'll go ahead and install, reinstall this. Uh, install this heat spreader things still I hope that thing doesn't vibrate with fans or anything. Okay. Uh, 
Um, huh. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. So this thing has got hard drive LED, power LED, plus minus reset switch, power switch, HD audio. HD audio. Hmm. Look at that. I'll go ahead and take this thing off because I'm going to have to reorient that. Now, fun part comes. <laughs> oh, this disgusting display of American excess right here. EVGA 1600 watt power supply. course then you discover you're an idiot band goes down because you're right there at the filter and the power switch goes out you know why the power switch goes out so you can turn it on and off and plug in the power cord perfect 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 so we'll just grab a few more of these little screws. Toss them into the appropriate locations. And you notice I'm starting the screws first. They all get a good straight thread before I put any measurable amount of torque on them. Wow, that one's just spinning. That one's just spinning. Those screws are freaking reamed out. Hmm. Interesting. Reamed out because whoever had this thing last stripped. This is a used power supply. I bought it off of Craigslist. So whoever had it last stripped out all the threads. Now, Notice that this power supply had no cables dangling off of it because it is a fully modular power supply. Let's get a different perspective here. Move all the trash on the table. So, as part of a fully modular power supply, that means all your cables are separate. Everything you need is separate. So you only use the cables that you need. So, um, Freaking SATA cables. So this looks like one I'll need. Four pin to four pin. Let's see, that's legacy. I'll need that. I'll need that for my Blu-ray. Get him out. Four pin to four pin. Need another one of those. 
four pin to four, four pin. Yeah. Got two of, I don't know if I'll need another of those. I'll crack it. When I get the GPU out, I'll figure that out. It'll be really pathetically obvious. VGA, VGA, VGA. We'll say VGA on them. It's a SATA cable. VGA, because this guy was running this this power supply as part of a miner, bit doing Bitcoin or crypto miner. Another VGA. That's why he has a hundred of these freaking VGA cables. This is the wow. This is the money. <laughs> Well, hello. This is the money right here. <laughs> so that I think the split cables would actually go into the motherboard. This big fat boy right here. Actually, no, it looks like. Yeah, that's what that's how that works. You just see what my other selection is here. Make sure I don't miss anything. Drives. Oh, CPU and CPU, CPU. I think I'll go with one that says CPU. That's VGA. Another CPU. We'll go with CPU. Another VGA. Okay then. So. Measure twice, cut once. Let's see, this guy goes in there. Firmly seated. And this guy and I'm actually holding, I'm not pushing directly down on the board holding the board with my fingertips and pushing with my thumbs down so I'm kind of doing a compression maneuver. Let's see. The cable management here will be kind of interesting. I'll figure that out in a minute. So we got CPU here. God, the lighting here sucks. SATA, SATA, SATA. SATA, CPU 2. VGA, 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 CPU 1, hmm, tell you what we're going to do here, CPU power 1, CPU power 2, Looks like this is how the only way that can go. So we will plug him. CPU power one. CPU power one. It's just sick amount of power. I almost expect to boot this thing up and just have the circuit breaker of the whole house just blow. Or at least the lights get very, very dim like the air conditioner was coming on or something. That that would be apropos. Alright, so... CPU 2. And truth be told, it looks like to me a CPU cable is identical to these VGA cables, it would appear. Actually, no, they are not the same. They are most definitely pinned differently. Wow, good thing I got all the stuff. Bitching. All right, CPU 2. It'll be a miracle how I figure out how to dress this thing where it doesn't look like just this big frigging rat's nest of crap.
Motherboard is fully powered. Okay, so I'll probably be stopping for a second here to actually consult. Stopping to consult with the manual to figure out external EXS fan, sys fan, a whole bunch of fan connections, EXS fan 2, EXS fan 3, Sys fan two, sys fan three. Well, I, look at that, I found the freaking audio connection. That was stupid. Ran the risk of totally hosing my cables. So, finally, finally the manufacturers figured out on the audio connectors in here. Go ahead and make that simple and foolproof. Just one plug for that. Then we've got the USB 3.0. So I've got J USB 4 and J USB 5. So I don't exactly know where USB <laughs> One and two are supposed to be, but the question is, is there enough room to switch? Wow. That has a bend moment on it from hell. I'd rather have the cable be a bend moment than putting pressure on the chassis or whatever. Okay, so, okay, so that's three pins, probably power and a tachometer signal. Let's see here, let's see here. Oh, there's JUSB1 and JUSB2. Don't worry about that because I don't have those because I have one big connector because both ports on the top of this case are USB3. <laughs> And also on the back of this motherboard, I have two, four, six, eight, nine, nine USBs, two ethernets. There's even a connection there for wireless, but I'm gonna turn the wire, well, it's wireless and Bluetooth. I'm on the fence of whether I'm gonna leave the Bluetooth turned on or not. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, Cine J Bat One, know what that is? USB J F P One, Power Sys J USB Three. It's a different connector. External fans, so on and so forth. Sin, sin, X, EXS fan, EXS fan, sys fan, sys fan, USB 1, reset. Gotta figure out all those jumpers. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Things actually got a power and a reset button 
directly on the motherboard. Is completely cabled. Only thing I need to hook up are the power buttons and reset buttons and that crap, and and the fan external to figure out which fans I want to do what. USB 3.2 front audio. Fan connectors can be classified as PWM pulse width modulation mode or DC mode. PWM PWM fan mode connectors provide constant total output and adjust fan speed with speed control signal dc mode connectors control fan by changing voltage this mode works in either tech pwm and dc mode however you can follow the instruction below to adjust the fan connector to pwm or dc mode manually so the default pwm mode is pump fan and then auto mode or sys fan x fan x fan x fan so you can switch between PWM mode and DC mode and adjust fan speed in BIOS. That is one of the cool things. So, so knowing that, having that bit of intelligence, so, I do have a pump fan. CPU fan one, pump fan one, system fan, exit EXS fan. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. System fan three. And these fans actually have a switch on the back, so I don't know how much that stuff really matters. So I'm going to land both of these. i tell you what we're going to do. Just like I initially kind of planned, I don't think it matters. I can change it all in the BIOS anyway. God, so they got this thing just tight as hell. Why in the hell did they do it that way? Got a wire right here in front of the fan. Suppose I could take this fan loose and rotate it 90 degrees. It's not like I'm hurting for, for wire length to avoid this silly thing here. Mm. That's pretty freaking tight. Okay, okay, okay. Those two are landed. The last two fans to land will be the actual CPU fan. Figure it out in a minute. Base clock up and down. Power button, reset button, thermal sensors. Chassis intrusion, RGB, don't give a damn about that. Rainbow, definitely don't give a damn about that. The Corsair connector, you connect the Corsair individually addressable R R RGB, who cares? Retry slow mode bo booting, onboard LEDs, LED power input, debug. Now let's, where the hell is
SATA front pan. Oh, there it is. Okay. Boom. JPF. Where's JPF? There it is. JPF1. Alright, so JPF1. Pin 1 is clearly denoted. So 1 and 3 is hard drive LED. I'm going to say that pin 1 is hot on this Jumper, jumper front panel. Well, that makes too much sense. Okay, so pin one and three, hard drive plus three is hard drive negative. That makes sense. Reset switch is five and seven. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, six. So like this. One, one. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So five and seven is the reset button. Done. Let's see, power switch. Power switch is six and Eight. That'll be the last two on the top. The power switch, of course, just does a shorts those pins, so there's no deal there. And power LED. Pin two is LED positive, and four is LED negative. And just do a quick little zoomy zoom zoom here we got going on. Get the angle correct. Rotate you around. Thread ripper. Looks really whited out in the viewfinder on this thing. Got audio landed, front panel connector landed, USB front panel landed. Motherboard power, motherboard power, motherboard power, because this seems it's a lot of power. Uh, top fan, back fan. <clears throat> Man. Um, oh, look at this big beast. <laughs> this sick beast. I think I think I'm I'm ready to mount the the fan in here. So I've got a thing of alcohol, a napkin. We're gonna do a quick little swabby swab on the on the processor. Let's do an elevated shot. All right, I do believe. I do believe that I'm ready for, for clean up the proc, remove any fingerprints, manufacturing schmoo. I would say that that CPU is probably about as clean as it's going to get. Uh, so, 
This thing's going to go in here. I got to remember to rip the uh, little doodad off. Be quiet. It's going to go in there like so, and we're going to be blowing through this thing. I wonder if I'll end up uh, ordering another one of these uh, while we're at it. When you're, when you're doing anything, when you're building a computer, working on an airplane, whatever, it never, never hurts to take pictures. I mean, to remember. God, the thing is just, just the sickest freaking thing ever. All right, so I'm doc just documented the uh, model number of the fans. Let's see, so we are going to have this fan. I guess we'll do the cable exiting out the back. It looks like we've used the, the front fan as sort of a, a guide. I can hook these little wires through the little friggin. Freaking arrows. Lost my arrows. Where the hell did my arrows go? Nope, we're good. We're good. Make sure that the top of the fan, wow, you see up here, the top is not protruding above the top of the case. Looks like pretty much where I need to be. This arrangement of clipping these fans off these goofy little wires. That's interesting. Oh, I see what the hell they're doing here. Oh, look at that. Okay. Okay, they want the second fan to actually be in the center of this thing. There's on this be quiet fan, there's two rubber strips. I wonder why this thing just didn't look right. I'm glad I saw that. So, check yourself before you wreck yourself. This fan actually presses up against these two rubber bumpers, which actually doesn't look like there's even a provision on to add a third fan. 
after all, even though I got these extra bale wires. Cute, very cute. So we're still exhausting. Yes, I want to blow, I want to blow air out the back. Cool, cool air in through the front, hot air out the back. Yes, indeed. You know what, I'm an ambidextrous magician came up with this raging bit of stupidity. Why does it look like this fan is actually something. Ain't that something. So the middle fan is actually way freaking bigger than the other fan. entertain you as I sit here and actually read the destructions. And direct you to use a Y cable. I'm not going to use a Y cable. So my question is, how in the blue hell Okay. Now that's interesting. So they gave me four bracket, four little wire deals. And two are actually shorter. Okay, so, all right. So perhaps I need to use the longer Oh, look at that. The longer ones actually fit right. Sort of. Huh, big emphasis on sort of. Don't fit right at all. I don't know why the hell why they get what these long ass brack bailing wires are for. Fan clips, 
quantity six. Well, considering the two are already on there, 135 millimeter fan, 120 millimeter fan, spacer nuts, screwdriver paste, Y cable. Hmm. Well, these long ones aren't exactly the cat's meow, so. Space the same. Question is why? That's one way of doing it. Attempt. Let's see, I think I did. So I got them both hooked on here. Just use my fingernails to just pull it taut and snap it in and Oh, you think this is a, a laser? No, Wolfie. No, sorry. Not tonight. It's muddy outside. All right. Oh, and then pawing me isn't going to do anything either. Sorry. That's not working for old Uncle Jay. Okay, all the brackets look good. That's positioned good. Now, the question is... <laughs> This is the bridge. I remember that sucker. <laughs> oh, there has to be a method to the madness. There has to be a method to the madness. So, cruel way to discover something that probably should have been pointed out. Very cruel way to discover this. Well, and that fan actually moved, so I need to correct that. So jo jockeying around this thing, I screwed up the bumper on this side. The fan's supposed to sit on that rubber. So when you put the middle fan in, think, oh, I'm going to be slick. You no longer have access to put your screwdriver through here to adjust or to actually attach the fan to the to the freaking heat sink. <laughs> So, best laid plans. What was I saying? Measure three times, cut once. So we'll just take old Mr. Secondary Fan on out of here because he ain't going to work. He, he's going to have to go in after the fact. That should be fun, trying to jockey him in place. I don't even see how the hell that's even supposed to happen. There's not going to be enough room for that. Wow. Just wow. I don't know how the hell they... I'm supposed to... Wow. Let me fix this little fooge up.
How the hell is that supposed to? Okay. To be chooched or not to be chooched. peel off label before you use it. All right, so the fun thing now is Okay, so it's going to go like this. The be the be quiet here should be readable in the case is standing. So when I do this, put that thing on there. Man, that is going to be up bitch and a half try and get that other fan to freaking go on there and and <laughs> when I add more memory the CPU cooler will have to come out there's pretty much no two ways about that wow such massiveness it's almost like working on a 6.7 liter diesel. So we're going to peel this off. And you know what? Even though it had a sticker on it protecting it, this was an open box from Amazon. That means, oh, it's going to be a little bit of an adventure when I decide to upgrade to 128 gigs. But such as it is. All right, we've got uh, Silver Schmoo. Wow, this thing's been recording for an hour. You know, I am not very confident in this crap. Well, that shit don't even look like it's... Shit's got the consistency of Play-Doh. Might be reversing that a little bit. Um, I'm going to pause this and see if I actually have... I thought this crap was Arctic Silver. I don't know what the hell this trash is. Let me pause this. All right, so the schmoo that I used in that first tube of stuff came out like Play-Doh. I don't know how old that stuff is. I don't know how long it's been in the system. So that came off. Paper towel, rubbing alcohol, it's gone. So we're back to a clean processor. And what I found, I've got the schmoo that they sent with the CPU cooler. It just doesn't look like there's a lot of schmoo there. I got a little bit of Arctic Silver schmoo. So, you know, we're just going to do what we can with. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, 
no one's ever said there's anything wrong with mixing schmoo. If you have a little bit of one kind of schmoo and another kind of schmoo, they'll cut their contraindica contraindicated, like in medicine where you use one and And that means we can't use the other, but you know what? Uh, we're going to mix schmoo here a little bit. I have no earthly idea what this is going to look like by the time the uh, Heat sink actually sits down on this thing. Having a processor this freaking large. Two tubes of schmoo, kind of spread the schmoo a little bit. And I press this thing down, you know, I might have just totally overdone. I might have schmoo leaking out of all corners of this thing. You know, we are going to find out. So the little spreader goes here. Be quiet as oriented correctly. my handy dandy right my handy dandy vendor provided screwdriver to go through the holes So, those two deals, and we got these little caps that go, decorative caps that go in here. So, one thing I figured out, let's see, before I even get there, let's go pull out my uh, awesome GPU here, this Asus. G-Force badass card. SLI strip. I decided to get two of these. Oh, this thing is sick. <laughs> oh, it's got one, one connector on it. So this thing, wow, that's incredible. It'll go in, looks like I need to ditch
Okay. Over here trying to test fit the GPU. This could be just, just such an experiment. It says, you know, there's PCIe 1. Trying to test fit. I have enough room to maneuver this thing. What happens if I take this dumbass thing completely off? I've got an interference problem. No, I don't. Boom. <laughs> oh my God, look at this pig. Just look at this freaking pig. So that goes on there. Suffice to say that if I had three GPUs in here, Maybe I could get two of them side by side. That's a close fit. I haven't even tried to get the other fan in there yet. That's a whole nother thing. It'll take 30 minutes to probably wiggle jiggle that damn thing to go in. But, um, hmm. So I could do two GPUs and then plus that M2 expander. That, I don't know if that would go down to the bottom without... You know, jacking up some connections down here, and then this motherboard is eventually full. I mean, I'm losing one whole slot for just running this big ass GPU, but I need my I need my video outputs. I need my four my four monitor heads. This is going to be my trading rig and my video editing rig and all that other crap. So let's just pause this for a minute. I mean, we're getting close here, folks. I mean, I'm down to literally getting this other freaking fan let's see this other freaking fan in here let's see okay that needs to go blowing towards the back question is if i put this sucker in here The other one comes out of the back. So if I go through the cooler, snake my wire, I can land land on the connector or do the the recommend manufacturer recommended Y cable. All right, so this part. Sure, what those extra long brackets are for, but all right. So I have one wire bracket here. Let's see. I remember what all this freaking packing material crap went to. Building a computer. I must mention right off the bat that it's very helpful to stay organized so you do not misplace stuff. I have two brackets. So, shit. How in the blue hell? How in the great blue hell are you supposed 
to put this stupid bracket on the... F I guess it's supposed to go in a full tower case. Maybe that's the situation. We're going to do CPU fan and pump fan. You hardly see what I'm doing. I am working in some exceedingly tight quarters here, trying to get these. And also under some very crappy lighting conditions with these stupid. I wish I had the lights like I got in my office, the recessed fixtures. Jeez, those things are bright and wonderful. Lighting in this house has sucked since the day it was built. Both fans are landed and have power. Get this wiring out of the way. Okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff's trash. Okay. Um Tell you what, before I stab, before I stab, a quick little thing here. This monster freaking thing. You know, I'm not so sure. Oh, oh my God, yeah. It just, <laughs> you talk about micro fit, gee whiz. We have an optical drive, Blu-ray burner. That's pretty important. And for that, one thing I was not shorted on this whole deal was cables. So here's two cables. And one of them will plug into the motherboard, and the other one will plug into the back of this drive. We also need a SATA power cable. Let's see, that has four, that has four. I think that's a fan extension. I need that. This one's already zip tied. That, uh, that has a four pin clunker on it. That. Um, that's four SATA positions. Nice to have a SATA power cord that is just to one SATA. That'd be cool. This crap back in the box. EGA. I got, definitely have no shortage of VGA power cables. And my wolf jumping up on the couch, make himself comfy. You know, no shepherd should ever be in a position of not having to be comfy. 
Are you comfy, Schultz? You look phenomenally comfy. Whatever. Oh my gosh. This thing is getting heavy. All right, so. We're going to eject top filler plate. And much like I suspected on this Antec case, they were thinking ahead. You'll notice screw hole, screw hole, screw hole, screw hole. I bet you they're threaded. Boom. Except fans. So if I don't have enough fanage in this with one, two, two, four fans, plus the CPU fan down here blowing, oops. If I don't have enough CPU fan, all right, so put front. Then I think this guy, I may have got this figured out. Uh, how does this work? <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Okay, that just clicks right in there. Toolless five and a quarter bays. I mean, it just clicked in. No screws. No screws. That works. All right, we're getting on the we're on the last home stretch here. So the last thing I need to do for this. Let's see here. I tell you what we're gonna do. I tell you what we're gonna do. Stick power. Power and stick the excess length of this down there somewhere. Say to one, say to two. Hmm. Well, just sneak this guy around here and land him on say to one. Take Mr. Data say to data cable. Comes around here now. Pause for station identification. And say to one. Say to one appears to be towards the inside of the board at the bottom. Don't know if it makes any difference. I'm sure the system will auto detect. Will auto detect whatever. All right, we got say to one put in. Just drop. I'll tell you what we got to do first here. I already know that I don't need to remove this other filler plate so I can put him back in place. Mr. GPU. Drop Mr. GPU in place. Our plates and we'll keep all our hardware and crap together because at some point, depending on how things go, I very well might add a second GPU to this thing to get another couple of monitor heads. 
I put an, another monitor up in my office for when I do start doing serious trading and stuff and or be able to have a monitor uh, up on the wall and, and move YouTube up there and be working on whatever project on another monitor. That would be cool. That would be very cool. Or be able to get into serious trading. Um, I am not at this time going to install, I've got another two terabyte SSD that's in an external enclosure. That's going to go in here and I've got a one terabyte that's in my laptop that'll come out. That's got all my Cisco crap on it. That'll actually be another drive in here. Um, and we'll kind of cross, cross the bridge on that when I get there. Uh, so I've got power supplies. CPU, GPU, optical drive, everything's cabled here. Um, so the pieces on that. Uh, I need to, I need to, wow, it's a long ass GPU cable. Perif, perif, oh, crap on that. Let's see. Don't have any of these guys that are actually short. SATA. These are all the same length. Yeah. Yeah. Love to find one that was just a smidge shorter. <laughs> Doesn't have to be more than eight inches. Whatever it is, what it is. So let's see. Is there any of these that are actually a full connector? It doesn't matter. The VGA. Naturally, lighting in this house is so sorry. VGA, holy crap! VGA one, VGA two, VGA two, three, four. <laughs> Oh, that's just sick how many VGA outputs this power supply has. Holy crap. All right, no matter, no worries. Big bubbles, no troubles. That's a 1600 watt power supply. It's grotesquely overkill, but if it... The idea of running a bigger power supply is really simple. If you run a power supply at 80 to 90% of its rated capacity, it won't last as long. It'll run hot. However, if you have something like a 1.6 kilowatt and you're only pulling 600, 700 watts, you're not even 50%. It should be able to do that, you know, to, while it's taking a nap. So anyway, all right, so we do, got, got the, uh, 
extra VGA power. That's connected, SATA's connected, motherboard's connected, fans are connected, buttons are connected, front panel jacks are connected. Um, at this exact moment, I am totally done connecting shit to this, to this system. So we're gonna 86 all the garbage here. Well, garbage, all these power cables and stuff like that are definitely not garbage, it's something you hold on to for love and, and lots of money because you can't, the Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore and Altex Electronics is, they're just lame. Okay, I think. I think that I have my two case nuts there. I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to try to put some power to this thing. Oh God, this thing is just a beast. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is just an enormous. <laughs> Look at the, the, the freaking connector on this power supply. <laughs> That's a, uh, yeah, that, uh, that connector makes a statement. It says, uh, goodbye, low electric bill. <clears throat> so this thing go down there. All right, I'm gonna pause the video and uh, run in there and grab a monitor. And uh, it's trash, trash. That's definitely not trash. That's trash. Save that. That needs to go over here. What did I do with that little stupid ass baggie? All right, we're gonna cut into a final deal. In my keep as many parts together extreme excitement, in filming Dilly Dink this piece, this and my new awesome Threadripper editing PC. Get some lights on here. Anyways, here she is in her glory. It's really you got a black box with an optical drive. You can't really see the stuff on the inside. See the fan whirring in the front. I'm gonna be really really quiet here and put the camera really, really close and see if you can hear the sounds. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Here's the fans running. Uh, I have, as I pointed out earlier in the video, there's two switches on the back of the case that control the fan speed for this top exhaust fan and a rear exhaust fan. Uh, they're both different sizes. Uh, I think the top one makes a little bit more noise. It is not objectionable at all. I've, I've got the switches set to high and let the motherboard regulate the speed. Uh, just go with that. Um, I've got Back here after final installation, still got a ton of USB ports. I've eliminated my USB hub. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I've got a crap ton of monitors. <laughs> I've had these 24 inch Dell monitors for a long time, several couple years anyway. Um, I don't know if they're 4K or not, whatever, they're, they work great. Uh, the cool thing, one feature about the Dell monitors is they support this uh, MST, multi-streaming multi technology. Or I think that's I said that right. It's uh, if you you can actually daisy chain these things together with DisplayPort. So this monitor's plugged into the PC. This one's plugged into this one, and that one's plugged into this one. So I, I have one port to drive three monitors. Uh, this is just a 40 inch old Vizio TV I bought off of Craigslist. Makes a good monitor. Um, I'm still working at home. I One of the things I've done with this, running Linux, Linux Mint 20, uh, it's the beta 
which I don't, they've already released the full version. I guess the beta evolves into the full version after updates. I don't know how to figure that out. <clears throat> but uh, I took and virtualized my work laptop, uh, which is a Windows 10 box, under uh, using VirtualBox, which is like VMware. And so far, it's working. Uh, I, I can do multi monitors with this thing. I've got one screen up here that's uh, just monitoring my email, and down here we got Teams and chat, whatever. And I'm, as you can see, I'm doing a little. I'm actually in the process of editing this video, <laughs> and uh, got another thing up here for uh, web content, etc. I'm actually going to take this fourth monitor, uh, and I'm going to hook it up. It sits perfectly on top of the top of the PC over there. Get, God, my desk is a disaster. I'm trying to get as much exposed desk as I can possibly get here. Uh, so I'm going to hook this one up, and it'll just be another place to stick a screen or do something. Uh, we'll figure that out. Um, in case anybody recognize whatever that is, it's not on right now, but that's my. Uh, I'm a ham radio operator, so I have my my dual band D Star. VHF UHF radio it lives right there in a TATCOM case underneath the monitors. I can listen to radio or talk on ham radio if I'm not working, or just mo usually 99% of the time it's just listening in because there's absolutely nothing going on on the VHF and UHF bands in analog world anyway. Uh, and I got a microphone over here that's actually connected to the radio. But uh, anyhow, this is my video editing, working at home multitasking system i'm still working out some of the bugs uh i got i updated the bios on the uh, msi creator board it's 1.5 i think right now uh, i've still got some instability i'm running uh for editing i run a, a software package called Pit pitivi pitivi i don't know how you pronounce it i was running open shot open shot is sucking under mint 20 it crashes it stutters it's just it just is a piece of garbage i don't know what is going on why it's acting like that um, i'm still occasionally getting a random lockup uh, i don't believe they are uh i don't think they're related to temperature um I think that if, I, if something, uh, the CPU or something on the board was getting hot, I'd hear the fans increase in, in RPM because the motherboard would command them to spin up to attempt to cool itself off. And that has not happened. I think there's just some bugs somewhere. I've changed the memory timing on the DRAM. And there's a bunch of other settings in there that I could toy with. I just need to do some more research and figure out what they need to be set at. I was just accepting the defaults and... I've had to go turn a bunch of stuff on to even allow my virtualization to even work in VMware. But uh, got more stuff to do. Um, since I sell some more of my ham radio junk, I'm probably going to throw another 64 gigs of RAM in this thing, bring it up to 128, get a little more breathing room when I'm rendering stuff. Uh, I probably need to do a different webcam or this Microsoft Life Cam doodad here, but I think that decreases system stability. Oddly enough. Uh, anyway, um, that's my uh, the wrap up. I apologize for not putting the first boot video. I hooked up a monitor, and a keyboard, and a mouse, and it the, the the system booted the first time. No error codes, no beeps, no nothing. It booted, and I plugged in a USB thumb drive that I had uh, loaded with Mint 20, a bootable thumb drive. It saw that it booted. It went into the de or into the live CD or live image. I said, "Screw it, let's install." So we did. I just accepted the defaults on everything except the time zone, and uh, that was it, man. The rest was history. And I'm just gonna sit here and grow with this thing, I guess. Anyhow, I hope to uh, start really catching up with the backlog of videos here pretty soon. Um, I don't know if I can get to two, you know, maybe two, three videos a week. Um, the Aviation Content Creator Awards is coming up here really, really fast. Uh, I want to have m as many of my videos out before then as possible. Um, I'm not really a participant 
in the awards as I'm just a small fry. Uh, but you can help me with that. <laughs> you can definitely share, like, and subscribe to my channel and help it grow uh, as I continue my my uh, flight training after check ride and gain ratings and 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 fly different airplanes and eventually go through the process of buying an airplane that's all for now thank you for uh, watching my video we'll see you on the next one